surely you can't say you were not interested or not bothered on that 50 million rands contract because it impacted on your financial and economic upward mobility in life because surely as a shareholder of on-point engineers through Ratanang, you would get some sort of proceeds from the profits that would be generated on that contract. It's a common cause. It's undisputed. So why do you want to converse the grounds that are not disputed? I'm a shareholder in on-point. I got money in on-point. Madonzela makes that point. So the matter of whether on-point got a tender rightfully or wrongly is now before court. All I'm saying is you cannot have a tender of 50 million collapse a province of a budget of 47 billion. So the intention has always been to smear me, to delegitimize me, so that I do not add my voice in the anti-corruption uh, project uh, of the country. So, Kassel was the premier, Bingu was the MEC, Masondo was the MEC. All these people who presided over that government are today ministers or deputy ministers in the clean government. The dark cloud of having collapsed the government of Limpopo remains with me, who has never been in government. But where, Samkel, maybe you'll teach me, where have you ever been, where have you ever seen a situation, rather, where the corrupt get charged, but there is no the corruptee? No one is charged from government, the collapsed government of Limpopo. The person who has enabled that corruption in Limpopo. In the indictment on On Point, nowhere do they say Malema bribed this one or that one in order to get the tender. So if I influence the tender, since I was not in government, who did I influence? And what was the power of this person? And why is this person not charged? If the matter is legitimate, and want to resolve the problem of corruption. That is with regard to on point in Limpopo. So the VBS matter, right? I've never spoken to VBS people. The person I know in VBS and not, do not know that much about that person is Matozi, the chairperson of Vele, who was introduced to me at the party of the Bavenda King, uh, Womb people. So, I've never had any dealings with them. This is very simple, Samgel. When a case is opened, the hogs have got access to all our forms of communication. They can even apply Section 205, get it from the judge, go into the history of our phones. In this case, they've done, by the way, with the VBS colleagues who are I arrested. No way, no way will you ever find me in any form of communication with any of the VBS people. But it's not about communication for you with the VBS people. No, no. There is a, there is a bank card, Mr. Malema. We are coming to that. We are, we are, yes, we are coming to that. I get it. We are building a case. Okay. So, Ho Julius, yeah. sorry, hold on. I want to go back to the issue around the VBS people that you never had contact with. Yes. Then one needs to ask, why was it then? Did you never wonder why they found EFF to be strategic all along? Because that's kind of what the communication has been. When you look at Pauli van Veig's stories, which, by the way, I understand her stance for her not deciding not to come. I absolutely get it. I think it's sad because there are many questions. She's led the story of VBS and would have been great to have her in the room. But I also understand why she made a decision not to. But coming back to the issue of VBS and EFF is the one thing she has managed to show is that VBS was seen as critical throughout. I mean, EFF was seen as critical. Have you not asked yourself why, if you've never had communications with these people, why would they look at no, your no. party? No, it's, it's no. Let's not talk general. We are no longer gossiping now. We're dealing with facts. Read an SMS where they said EFF is strategic of Polyphon Vic. Read it to me. All right, I think... There's no any form of communication in Vele, in VBS, in any of the evidence displayed by you where they describe EFF as being strategic. No 